In this workflow, we will cover the volumetric curvature and other attributes. The curvature is calculated from the steering cube. At every sample location, a virtual local horizon is constructed and converted to depths in the time surveys. That's the reason the velocity input is required. The output attributes may be projected along horizons. In this exercise, we will compute and compare various attributes that pick up faults and fractures. Start the 3D attribute from Analysis Attribute 3D. If there are attributes selected on the list, we open a new attribute set 3D. We'll generate similarity attributes with different parameters. We select similarity from the list. Keep the default parameters steering to none and we call it non-steered similarity and add as a new. Next attribute will be similarity, but this time we will use the steering. Set is to full and select steering background. The output name, call it steered similarity and add as a new. The third attribute will be curvature that we will select from the list. Change the output to most positive curvature and select the steering background as steering data. Type in a new name, we'll call it most positive curvature and add as a new. The next attribute will keep curvature but this time the output will be the most negative curvature and we'll change the output name to most negative curvature and add as a new. Notice that in the curvature attribute computation using a large step out with detailed steering cube gives a similar result as using strongly filtered steering cube but with a small step out. However, the attribute runtime will be different. The last attribute to add to the list is the deep attribute. So we select deep from the list. The steering data will be steering background and the output will be using the polar deep. So we change the output attribute name to polar deep. and we add as a new. Close the attribute set 3D window. Now we will display these attributes on a Z-slice. We right click on the Z-slice, add and select data. As the visualization of the full Z-slice might take some time, we can limit the inline and crossline range. For that, cancel this window so right click on the Z slice number, display position, change the inline range between 120 and 400 and the cross line range 350 to 600 and set the Z slice to 1640 millisecond and apply. Select non-steered similarity from the attribute list and OK. Then we right click again on the uh, Z-slice 1640, add attributes. And this time we select the second attribute, steered similarity and OK. In similar manner, display the rest of the three attributes. So we add attributes, select most positive curvature, next attributes, right click on the uh, Z slice, add attributes, most negative curvature, OK. Last attribute to display is the polar dip. So we select Add Attribute, Polar Deep, OK. Now we can compare all these attributes by ticking in and off each of these attributes. First thing is to set similar color bar for all of them. 
So we highlight the attribute, go to the color bar and select similarity. And we do the same thing for all the other attributes. And the last. Then change the display to view North Sea and zoom in. So the first one is polar deep, most negative curvature, most positive curvature, steered similarity, and finally non steered similarity. Depending on the analysis objective, to highlight faults, fractures, or stratigraphic changes, one of these attributes can be selected and parameters can be optimized further. For example, if it's for fault analysis, we can see that the uh, steered similarity show very sharpened faults compared to the non-steering similarity or the most positive curvature or the other attributes. This concludes this workflow where we computed volume curvature and other attributes that pick up faults and fracture and we compared the results.